taxi bumped down the road, coming to a stop in front of the huge train hangar. Maynard Henry had barely opened the door when Chief jumped out. The little dog chased his tail around and around, glad to be out of the car. Tuck and Billy Holden stared out the window at the enormous building. With its lights glowing in the night sky, the hangar looked like a spaceship from a faraway planet. Inside, train builders were working in secret to put the finishing touches on the torpedo. The brand new engine that no one had ever seen, but everyone was calling it the locomotive of tomorrow. The door to the hangar swung open, and Thaddeus Winterbottom stepped out. As president of the railroad, he was fond of giving long-winded speeches. Tonight, he began, clearing his throat mightily, the torpedo will set out on its first run. I'm proud to have the three of you join me on this historic occasion. Billy, Tuck, and Mr. Henry started to go in the hangar, but Mr. Winterbottom pulled them back. He wasn't finished yet. We will travel in darkness, he went on, making our grand entrance tomorrow morning at the World's Fair in New York. Mr. Henry, you have the honor of being the first engineer of the locomotive of tomorrow. Tuck and Billy, you will be its first passengers. Chief, you will be its first canine. Chief wagged his tail happily, even though he had no idea what a canine was. Inside the hangar, a giant blue locomotive was being lowered by a heavy crane. I give you the torpedo, Mr. Winterbottom. The largest and fastest passenger engine ever built. You're looking at one million pounds of rolling steel. Tuck and Billy stared in amazement. The torpedo looked like a rocket. It was huge, longer than 15 automobiles lined up end to end. Mr. Henry gazed up at the beautiful engine. Well, I'll be, he said suddenly. Well, I'll be. As Tuck watched the workers set the torpedo on the tracks, he felt like the luckiest boy in the world. He couldn't believe it was only a few weeks ago that he had dreamed of a glass train car with high domed windows all around. His mother and father had designed a model of Tuck's dome car and entered it in the Invention of Tomorrow contest at the World's Fair. When Tuck and Billy decided to surprise their parents at the World's Fair, they never imagined that they would be lucky enough to arrive in New York on the first run of the torpedo. Mr. Winterbottom invited them on board as a reward for rescuing Maynard Henry's train to President Washington from a dangerous crash. And now, here they were, about to take part in an historic occasion. It was late at night when the torpedo was finally ready to go. Mr. Winterbottom stepped forward and cleared his throat. The workers knew what that meant. He was going to make a speech. They scattered quickly. Noticing that he had no audience, Mr. Winterbottom decided to cut short his remarks. Mr. Henry climbed into the torpedo's cab. Tuck and Billy were already inside. They had never seen so many dials and switches and levers. What are all these things for? Asked Billy. She reached for a shiny black knob. Oh, don't touch that, Mr. Henry cried. It's the steam release. It was too late. Billy had already turned the knob. A blast of steam shot from the engine, and a cloud filled the platform, covering Mr. Winterbottom from head to toe. Although he had disappeared from view entirely, he could be heard sputtering inside the thick white cloud. Mr. Winterbottom, yelled Tuck. Are you all right? <laughs> Not to worry, young man, Mr. Winterbottom answered from inside the haze. Historic occasions often have rocky beginnings. Mr. Winterbottom retired to the parlor car to change his suit and rest up. The others waited on the tracks for the all-clear signal. At last, it came. Well, whippersnappers, Mr. Henry said, looks like we're ready to roll. He took a deep breath and fired up the mighty engine. Billy could see that his hand was shaking as he took hold of the throttle. She placed her small hand over his. Don't worry, Mr. Henry, she said. You're going to do great. Billy kept her hand on his as the torpedo pulled out of the hangar into the dark night. They rolled smoothly along the tracks, passing sleeping villages and shadowy towns. Only a full moon and the engine's bright headlight lit the way. The measured beats of the wheels pounded out a steady rhythm. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Let's see what she's really got, Mr. Henry said. He opened up the throttle, letting more and more steam do more and more. When the 
the torpedo reached 100 miles per hour, Tuck and Billy hooted and hollered. They felt like they were flying. As the night passed, Tuck and Billy grew tired. Why don't you catch a little shut-eye, suggested Mr. Henry. I can't sleep, said Billy. I miss my parents. Tuck put his arm around Billy. Remember what Mom and Dad told us, he said gently. No matter how far away they are, they are always just on the other side of the train whistle. Mr. Henry pointed to the cord above his head. Go ahead and blow that thing, he said. Say good night to your folks. Billy pulled on the cord. The whistle sounded. It was the same sound their family heard every day back home in California when the daylight limited past their house. Billy smiled. The whistle reminded her of her parents. She knew that somewhere out there, they were thinking of her too. She snuggled up next to Tuck, and soon they were both.